Alright brothers, I'm the king of video games and welcome to my first ever video review. And this is of Star Wars Resistance Season 1. And warning, spoilers are ahead. So, Star Wars Resistance takes place on an above water platform named the Colossus on the planet of Castilion. It follows rebel spy Kazuda, Kaz for short, Ziono, as he tries to blend in and get along with the people there while uncovering information about the First Order for the Resistance. The show has great characters, along with amazing character development, and forcing characters to make difficult choices. The biggest characters other than Kaz are Tam, who feels betrayed by her friends, and is on the edge of joining the First Order until she actually does it in the finale. Um, Niku, a funny and very literal alien man, he mostly serves as comic relief and is Kaz's best friend, but is a great character by himself. Yeager, a former rebel soldier who fought at Jakku and has a dead wife and child. He isn't really a resistance spy, but he helped Kaz get set up there and always knew that Kaz was a spy and he employs him in his workshop. Lastly is Captain Doza and his daughter Tora. The captain of the Colossus and his daughter, so they have a lot of power and they work up in the tower in the middle of it. Um, they eventually team up with the Resistance, even though Captain Doza was a former Imperial, and um, uh, sort of allows the First Order to take over the platform. But before the series was released, I was sort of confused about the difference of Team Fireball and the Ace Squadron. But the Aces are the group of pilots that are employed by Commander Doza to protect the platform. But the only two members of the series that it really focuses on is Tora and hype phase on, but Kaz and Yeager sort of do unofficially join by the end of the series, or the season. Team Fireball is the group of Yeager, Kaz, Niku, and Tam. They work on Yeager's ship, the Fireball. They are the main characters, but the last few episodes of Resistance are really interesting because they take place during The Force Awakens and really do a great job of showcasing Starkiller Base's destruction of Hosnian Prime, which happens to be Kaz's home planet. So whenever he sees its destruction, he's completely devastated, and I think that it actually had a lot more emotional impact than in The Force Awakens when we didn't have any characters that were really connected to any of those planets of their homes. Um, but other than that, there's some great characters that return, such as um, from the movies even, such as Poe Dameron, who's voiced by Oscar Isaac, he reprises his role, and he's really great in the episodes that he's in, and has a great relationship with Kaz, it's very fun. Um, I thought that he was pretty good in the series, but who else was good is um, Gwendolyn Christie is back as Captain Phasma in just a few episodes, but really the villains of this show are new for the series, and that would be um, Commander Pyre, along with Agent Tyranny, and Agent Tyranny is aptly named sounding like Tyranny, but Commander Pyre is a Stormtrooper commander, and he really um, has quite a presence in the show, and I can't wait to see where Pyre and Tyranny go after this on Season 2. Um, but for Agent Tyranny, she appears only at the end of the season, really, but um, I think that she'll have a bigger presence at Season 2. Another few characters I appreciated were the pirates, and especially one of them named Sonara. She was a really interesting character. They focused a lot in on some episodes, and I think that they did came back at the very end and are going to be in the platform, and I'd like to see how they deal with the citizens that they were attacking at the beginning of the series. When Resistance was first announced, I made a blog post where I detailed the news, discussed what I thought of it, and said what I wanted in the series. I guessed correctly that General Leia would appear, but I also thought that Han Solo might appear, which that turned out to be wrong, but they actually were going to put him in the series, but they replaced him with um, Yeager's brother, so they would have a connection to a character that was already on the show. Um, but... He won't appear in Season 2 because he's dead by the time of The Force Awakens. And given that same logic, it's very unlikely that Snoke will appear, which I also speculated. But it's not impossible for Kylo Ren to appear, 
which would be great because you have to have that Ben Swallow up there, right? Um, so Kylo Ren still could appear in the series, I think, and I'd be very hyped. Um, we'll see what he does. And the series is can go in very interesting places, and I hope that they somehow bring in characters that aren't from the movies, too. Like, um, I had speculated that Ransom Castorfro from the book Star Wars Bloodline by Claudia Gray would appear. But I'll be honest with you all, I don't really think that, um, Resistance would be the right place for him right now. Because it just doesn't work with the timeline and everything. Um, but I've come to accept that the only person who would really address his whereabouts would be Claudia Gray. If she ends up writing a new book about him in that time period or about the Resistance. I don't think that the characters... Um, left on a cliffhanger, Rebels will appear either, which would be Ezra and Thrawn, and then Ahsoka and Sabine rescuing them. But I believe that they will be addressed somewhere, probably in a Disney Plus series after Clone Wars ends, and there's a slot open there for an animated series. Um, but I don't think that that stops it. Hera and her um, son Jason Syndulla from appearing, and that would be really interesting. Um, the series does end in a similar way um, to the series finale of Rebels, but this isn't the series finale, it's only the season one finale. So we're actually going to get closure on what happened to these characters, because they go away in hyperspace to an unknown location, and we don't know where it is, and that happens in Rebels too, but we'll get closure on these people and where they're going in this same series. So that's the difference. Um, next, I'd like to get into what I liked and what I didn't like about the series. Um, Resistance really has some great dogfights, races, and battles. Some of the best in all of Star Wars. The races are the best since the pod race in Phantom Menace, I think. Which I honestly like that. You can see before I've done the review of that episode 1 racer video game. Um, I kind of wanted a pod race in Solo, and we didn't get that. But I think maybe Season 2 would be an opportunity to bring in pod racing, especially since the series is going to other planets and it's a mobile station now. Um, the only big problem the show can really have is that it can sometimes be childish and have filler, which are both things that can slow the series down from moving forward in a serious way. But the characters um, like act goofy and silly sometimes, but there really can be some good comedy on the show, especially with a good running gag about a janitor that all is always having a very bad time being in the middle of all the fighting on the platform. Another gag seemingly mocking Rebels Phoenix Squadron and other code names is when um, Niku called Kaz Blowfish 1 and called himself Blowfish 2 during an underwater mission. Um, and going back to that janitor guy, I really do love the moments in the series when we can see some of the effects of all the conflict in the show on regular people and connect with the characters. The First Order is really harmed and placed many restrictions on the people of the Colossus, and we get to see the results of this and it's a pretty neat thing. And this is pretty unrelated, but I really appreciated how good the trailers and ads for the show actually were. They were cut and edited really well, and they built up the suspense and hype for me a lot. I loved the episode, too, um, where it featured the Kawakian monkey lizards, because I just love Silicious Crumb. And it had some great action between Poe and Kaz. Um, and we got to go to different planets, which was fun. Um... I really also like that they introduced the Kawakian Ape Lizards, which are a different version of them. Um, really, I don't know what will happen in Season 2, and they've wrapped up basically everything. Just I Want a Pod Race would be really the only thing, and I think it'd be great for the show animation-wise and story-wise, as I already said. Um, but, like, I think that they have addressed everything. I don't know where the show's going, and I'm honestly pretty excited for that, but I don't know whether the show will move farther away from the story of the movies, or closer to them, considering it will take place in the gap between um, Episode 8 and The Rise of Skywalker. So, we'll see what happens there. But, like, I know the First Order will be chasing the Colossus from interviews that they've said, and that should be interesting, so we'll see how connected that First Order is and what's going on with them after The Last Jedi. Um, but I'm curious, really, what will happen with the series, because I just don't know. Um, and we know that they've, Niku blasted off the hyperdrive, they were supposed to go to the Resistance base, but he made an error, so we know that they're going to renew it for Season 2. Um, 
and that's really all we know about the series, and that pretty much wraps up everything I think about the series. I don't think it's better just yet than Resist, than Rebels or Clone Wars, but I think that it could be if they really, um, stepped it up. I mean, Re Rebels and Clone Wars are great, but I don't think the series is as great as them just yet. But I did thoroughly enjoy the show, and I watched it week to week, and I think it really is an exemplar of how Star Wars should use characters that don't have any Jedis or Force involved, because this show is doing that and making great series, while um, the Clone Wars and Rebels did rely on those heavily. While it was great, this show is doing something different, and I applaud that. Um, but really, that's it, so thank you for sticking around. I'll come back soon with a new blog and video about Star Wars Celebration, um, Disney Plus, and all the news we've been getting. I'll be doing video adaptations of my blog, um, and I'll do these about once a month, starting with the two this month, which I will also do with the Disney Plus and Celebration and everything. So, stay connected, and goodbye.